Hey guys, Brian Schultz here with Cape Falcon Kayak and I am incredibly excited right now because today is the day I get to start working on my new double paddle canoe design. Now a Cape Falcon version of a skin on frame double paddle canoe is something I've been wanting to build for a very long time now. I'm really stoked to have carved out some space and time in the shop here and I thought it would be kind of a fun adventure to actually have you follow along with me and literally look over my shoulder during these initial design phases and then I will take the next four or five days to actually build this canoe. We'll put it on the water and we'll see how it paddles. Is this first canoe going to be the new Cape Falcon canoe? Absolutely not. But what it will do is it will give me a starting point that I can then work from and I'll build 12 or 15 or so variations on this basic theme and test them out over the course of the entire summer and hopefully by the end of the summer all that information that we learned from trying those different boats will coalesce into what will eventually become the new Cape Falcon canoe design. But that's a long ways in the future so for now let's just come up with some design parameters, grab a pen and a paper and get started building a boat. So I'm sitting here on the floor of the shop here I've got a batten and a string and a tape measure and a pencil and a piece of paper and I just spent a few minutes kind of coming up with some general parameters for what I think I want the canoe to look like but before I talk about that I just want to mention something that I think is kind of amazing that happened yesterday which is that my girlfriend was at the waste transfer station and she saw some people roll up with a canoe on top of their rig and they dumped a couple boxes and so she went over to see what was in the boxes and it was actually two full boxes of just beautiful, clean, mint condition canoe building books. And so she brought these home to me. And I mean, it's just such an amazing coincidence that this would happen exactly as I'm beginning this project here. I've got like Canoe Craft by Ted Moore, Featherweight Boat Building by Mac McCarthy, the Great Canoes by David Neal and just a whole bunch of others and I mean these guys are legends in American canoe building and so I just feel like that's just such you know an amazing coincidence and hopefully a really good omen for this project so kind of excited just to have these here for inspiration while I work. So talking about the canoe that I want to build here I think what I'm looking for with the idea of this project is just to take the basic themes of skin on frame which is ease of building, fast building, lightweight, and low cost, and really carry them to their ultimate epitome. And I feel like nothing epitomizes that more than just the whole idea of a skin on frame double paddle canoe. So as far as parameters, I want this thing to cost less than $300 to build, I want it to take less than 25 hours, and I want it to weigh less than 22 pounds. Now as far as what I want to do with it, you know, I want it to be kind of a general purpose boat. I want something that's narrow enough and fast enough that I can just go out for an afternoon and not feel like I'm in this big doggy boat. But I also want it to be large enough and stable enough that if I want to take it down some light white water or put a little sail on it, it's still going to have enough stability that I'm going to feel safe in those circumstances. So that's kind of my general idea for this boat. But you have to start somewhere. And where I'm going to start is in the inside of my van. Now I am so tired of climbing on top of my van and tying down boats. So I thought, what if this thing could just slide inside of my van? Now the inside of my van is 11 foot 10 inches long at the absolute extreme. And so I'm going to set that as my first parameter. I don't want this thing to be any longer than 11 foot 10 inches. And I'm probably going to build two of these. So I think I'll build one at 11 feet so my girlfriend can have one. And I'll build one at 11 foot 10 inches for myself. So we have a couple different sizes to try. Now as far as how wide it should be, as a kayaker I really don't want to be into anything wider than 25 inches. But as someone who wants to do a little bit of camping and touring and sailing, I want to be in something closer to 30 inches. So we're just going to split that difference right down the middle and say it's going to be somewhere around 27 inches. Now for as deep as it needs to be, I know that you don't want to be too deep in any kind of boat because if you're using a kayak paddle stroke you're going to be banging your elbows and it's just not going to be a very fun experience. So I think about the deepest I could possibly go before I start feeling uncomfortable in the boat is about 10 inches so I'm going to go between 10 and 11 inches for that and we'll see how that actually turns out. So the shear on this meaning the curve from the ends of the kayak to the center and then back up to the other end. Typically I think that the general consensus with pack canoes is that you only need really a two to three inch shear but pack canoes are generally used in fairly protected waterways and I have a tendency uh, shall we say to end up in not so protected waterways 
And so I'm going to bump that shear up just a little bit. And that may end up biting me with a little bit of a wind penalty there. But I just know that if I don't have at least a four or five inch shear on this thing, I'm going to end up taking a little bit of water over the bow when I'm going into some heavy chop. So rocker. The rocker is really a moving target in a skin on frame a boat of any type because as you're adding framing elements to the boat, it's continually adding or subtracting tension, which can change the rocker while you're working. So my experience is that you just start with what you're aiming for and then it's definitely going to change during the course of the build. And then on your second and third boats, you can get it actually dialed into what you want it to be. So I'm just going to aim for a rocker of about an inch right now and accept the fact that that's not how it's going to turn out. But on my next boats, it'll turn out correctly. Stem angle. Now the stem angle on this is kind of interesting because the way that I'm going to build these particular boats is kind of like a build a kayak where the stem kind of hooks over the ends of the gunnels. But what that does is it projects the cut water of the front of the boat out further into the water than it would be if this was just say a strip built design or a plastic canoe or whatever, which means that I need to compensate for that by raking the angle of the stem backwards so I don't end up with too much of a fine section further out underwater that's going to really lock the canoe in and keep it from being as maneuverable as I want it to be. There is no way for me to get this right on the first try, so I'm just going to take a wild guess and I'm going to make the stem 22 degrees of angle because there's a preset on my chop saw that's 22 degrees. And I try to work with natural measurements whenever I can, meaning I like to work in whole inches or if there's a preset on a tool, I like to use that just to make the building process as easy as possible. And as long as I'm taking a guess, I might as well take an easy guess. We'll see what happens. Now, the overall section of this boat, meaning, you know, is it a very round bottom boat or is it a very square bottom boat, you know, I really am not sure where this is going to end up. Um, what most people do when they're designing skin on frame canoes and sometimes skin on frame kayaks is that they tend to come up with a shape and they make it out of plywood and they try to force that shape to happen. But my experience is that when you try to work over molds the same way you would with a lap straight boat or a strip built boat, it will keep that same shape while you're working. But as soon as you're done and you pull those molds out, it will either change shape right away or it will slowly change shape over time. And I have found the only way to get really truly accurate shaping and skin on frame is to start with the actual framing members that you're going to be using and use those as the forms for building the boat. It takes a little bit more finesse and a little bit more courage in some ways because there's a tendency to think that that's not an accurate way to work. And it's true that your first one is not usually perfect, but if you work your way towards your design by using the actual framing members as your forms, it's more likely to be easier to build in the future because you're working with natural bends instead of constantly trying to force the framing to fit around kind of an arbitrary shape. So. Now, what shape do I want the plan of the gunnels to be? I'm really going back and forth on this right now. I like the idea of a symmetrical boat because it's easy. You just make the boat the same in the front and the back. I'd like to do it that way, but I'm not going to be surprised if I actually get to the point where I'm setting up the gunnels and I decide to make this a little bit more of a Swede form boat because there's a little bit of an advantage to that, although I'm not going to talk about all the whys, whys and hows of why that is. So, that's kind of a starting point right there. We're going to build a couple canoes at once here. One's going to be 11 feet, one's going to be 11, 10. They're going to be, you know, about 26, 27 inches wide. And I'll build those over the course of the next four or five days. I'm not going to try to narrate the entire process because I think that would tempt people to just use this as kind of a free building video. And I don't really have a problem with giving away free information, but I do have a problem with giving away free information that isn't accurate. And I don't think you really want to use a video of somebody doing something before they actually know what they're doing as an instructional guide. So I think what I'll do is have Liz just look over my shoulder and take kind of some random shots of me building. And then we'll actually put this thing on the water in about a week and we'll see how it paddles. So. Come on this journey with me. Let's build some boats. Have a good time.